Well, I came from Chicago, and I had never done anything physical in my life. But there was this cute guy who was my lab partner in chemistry, and he said, do you want to go climb a mountain? So I said, sure. And we reached this beautiful glacier, and the sun rose. And I fell in love with mountain climbing. When you stand on a mountain summit with the clouds beneath your feet and the other gorgeous peaks poking up, um, you're on top of the world. In the 70s, I was a postdoc at Stanford, and a friend died in the mountains. And I shifted my interest from more theoretical research to something that would really help people in the world. We looked at fire retardants in children's sleepwear called TRIS, found they caused cancer and changed DNA. I wrote a lead article in Science, and three months later, uh, TRIS was removed from children's sleepwear. After this victory, Arlene began a pioneering career as a high mountain expedition leader. It lasted for 25 years. I was actually the first American woman to attempt Everest. I ended up organizing an all-women's expedition to Annapurna in 1978, and we were the first Americans and the first women to climb Annapurna, which might be the most dangerous and most difficult of the world's highest mountains. Our climbs, I was told by many women, really inspired them to achieve their own potential. Gosh, isn't that exciting? And there's our Christmas picture. Yeah. It's a pretty amazing trip. It was beautiful. In 2006, my daughter started college, and I wanted to go back and make a contribution to the world, and I really didn't know what I was going to do, but I decided to look into what was happening with flame retardants and discovered the very same tris that we had helped remove from children's sleepwear was now in furniture in high amounts. At her home in Berkeley, California, Arlene began free cushion testing to look for high levels of flame retardant toxins. Okay, so what is this, Michael? This is from a rocker. Okay, well, this is 5% bromine. So it's really high, really high. That's 50,000 parts per million. So, yeah, you want to get rid of this. When mothers find out that their breast milk has toxins in it, they get angry, they get upset. And it's not fair to have the government, in this case, mandate toxins in our furniture. Right around the same time, my cat Midnight, who'd been like this 14-pound healthy big cat, became like a six-pound skinny miserable cat. And my veterinarian said that he thought it was a chemical. I knew that the chemical that was being used in furniture in California caused thyroid problems in animals, and I guessed that that could be what was causing Midnight's problem. Midnight's illness and the return of a toxic flame retardant prompted Arlene to launch the Green Science Policy Institute. The Green Science Policy Institute is working to help bring government scientists, academics, and NGOs together to solve really pressing questions for our society so that decisions are made based on good science and good data. By mobilizing scientists, firefighters, and NGOs, Arlene achieved a recent victory that kept nearly two billion pounds of toxic chemicals out of electronic equipment made worldwide. Arlene is leading the charge bringing science into advocacy. And when you let science fall where the chips may be, then industry can win and the environment can win and humans can win. Well, what the world should know about Arlene Bloom is that she's an extraordinary person, a mover and shaker in the mountaineering, the hiking world, and absolutely in the uh, chemical toxicity reduction world. I love going on expeditions, working with a team of people together, using every bit of your mental ability, your physical strength to do something. And what I'm doing now feels like my life's most important expedition. And our goal, the summit of our mountain, is a healthier world for all of us. 
For the extraordinary contributions she's making in her encore career, Arlene Bloom wins the 2008 Purpose Prize.